Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation today. We're going to, today's topic is a myelotropic lateral sclerosis, one of the fatal diseases um, with the not much treatment options. So again, my name is Premier Charyat. I work as a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents. I'm also director of research. So let's get into our topic. Today we're going to talk about amylotropic lateral sclerosis. And just a definition, it's a progressive neurogenerative disorder uh, that affects upper and lower uh, motor neurons. And it's also called a Lou Gehrig disease. And uh, when you talk about amyotropic, um, that means it comes from the word without nourishment to the muscles. And you got lateral means to the side. And then sclerosis means hard, hardened and reverse to the hardened nature of the um, spinal cord in advanced ALS. Now, there is uh, some definition you have to know. Uh, there is um, upper motor neurons and the lower motor neuron. In the upper motor neuron is uh, involved the brain until they exit the rear of the spinal cord, cervical spinal cord. And then you have the lower motor neurons below which affect the muscles, especially the leg muscles. Mm, so epidemiology, if you look at the facts, within a population of 100,000, there are two new ALS cases each year. It's rare, and the estimated prevalence in the United States is five cases per 100,000, okay? Now, what population or who, which people are at risk? Age, you know, as we get older, it's a high risk, and it could be anywhere from 55 to 75. Gender, men are slightly more likely than women, and race, ethnicity, Caucasian, non-Hispanics are uh, most likely to develop this disease, okay? Now, when we talk about, there are two types. One is parodic ALS, without any reason, kind of come in. And the other one is the familial genetic, with the genetic mutations. And uh, genetic mutation anywhere could be like uh, around, like I think between anywhere, you know, five to 10%, some studies are maybe like 30%. Um, and the most, um, you know, the prevalent when you look about the genetic mutation is a gene mutation in the hexa nucleotide G4C2 repeat expansion in the chromosome 9. And there's also mutations in the copper zinc uh, superoxide dismutate SOD1, um, which kind of affect a very important protein called TDP43, which we'll talk about later. Although, um, so th there's a lot of information still coming about the genetic mutation. Uh, if you look at the pathogenesis, I think if you have to remember one word, always think, think uh, things to remember is about this TDP protein, or um, which is the transactive response DNA binding protein, which play a very important role in our neuronal system or the brain. Um, they had like around 6,000 RNA targets in the brain, and then they are involved in the RNA process, and they make the make the protein. So the main role is to make the protein. Anytime this um, is, uh, is there's a problem with the TDP protein because of the mutation or the environmental causes, a lot of damage can be done to the neuronal, neuronal degeneration, neuronal homeostasis effect, and you get the disease, okay? Now, the so symptoms, what is the usual symptom people can usually can present with the muscle weakness over weeks to the months and multiple falls without any reason. Speech or swallowing problem also can be seen. And hard to explain shortness of breath because of uh, diaphragm is affected and daytime sleepiness more, Cognitive and behavioral symptoms, loss of sympathy, inappropriate laughing. Now, what are the signs when you examine the patient? You start with the head, neck, and all that. Dysarthria. There's going to be tongue wasting, fasciculation, exaggerated jaw jerk. Okay. In the neck, there is signs of weak neck flexor, and the neck extensors are affected. Uh, when we talk about lungs, we already talk about the effect of the um, uh, about the diagrams or respirations are affected, and then extremities. You know, mainly the legs. There's going to be weakness, atrophy of the muscle because the uh, LMN lesion. There's fasciculation. There's also going to be spasticity and also weakness in the shoulder girdle muscles. Now, very important to do a neuro exam on this patient. So we'll just kind of look at what are the neurological findings. <clears throat> so if you look at the brain stem, there's low Motor neuron, neuron, lower motor neuron lesions include signs in jaw, face, uh, tongue, and the larynx. And the, low, uh, uh, and the upper motor neuron lesion will be clonic jaw jerk, abnormal gag reflex, exaggerated snout reflex, urobarbal features, uh, forced yawning, abnormal deep tendon reflexes, and the spastic torn. 
Now, when you look at the coming to the next in the cervical spine, you can have element signs in the neck, arm, hand, and the diaphragm. And the upper motor neuron, uh, UMN signs, clonic, otherwise abnormal, uh, delayed tendon reflexes, Hoffman reflex, spastic tone, and the weak and atrophic limb with the fasciculation and, uh, or, and preserved or increased reflexes. When you talk about the thoracic spine, um, you have LMN signs in the back and the abdomen, and the UMN signs include loss of superficial abdominal reflex, increased DTR in the lower extremities, and the spastic tone. Now, coming to the last one, lumbos, lumbos sacral spine, um, element signs include ba in the back, abdomen, leg and the foot, human signs clonic or otherwise abnormal delayed tendon reflexes there, spastic tone and the weak and atrophic limb also seen. Okay, now so just another slide we're just going to talk about in the um, ALS, there is human lesions are mainly primitive reflex display, hyperreflexia, spasticity and hypertonus. And when you talk about the lower motor neurons, you got the marked muscle atrophy, loss of reflex, flaccid and hypotonia, and also you can have fasciculations, okay? Now, the diagnosis, you know, most of the time you have to go by the clinical diagnosis. You have to roll out a lot of other causes <clears throat> kind of related to, and then you come with the diagnosis. Main thing you have to depend is the EMG or electromyography. Um, can the nerve conduction, I mean, in the EMG finding is going to be detect electrical activity or muscle fibers can help diagnosis. There's, I mean, nerve conduction study is not is usually normal, and MRI is non-specific, and muscle biopsy is usually not re not recommended. So, what is our most classic finding in the EMG? Active and chronic motor neuron loss and fasciculation multiple region. If you have to remember something, always remember the fasciculation in the multiple region in the EMG. And the treatment is like a very limited treatment. Uh, Rylosol 50 mg twice a daily, twice daily, where the mechanism of action is increased reuptake uh, of glutamate in astrocytes. And there is another new drug, Adaravon, 60 milligram IV, you give for 60 minutes for like 14 days. It's a free radical scavenger. And future therapy is kind of coming, a lot of uh, investigations kind of going on in the stem cell therapy, okay? Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be back with another presentation. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.